Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to Pop Turnative. This is the podcast and talk show. We have digital discussions, the worlds of TV, film, news, pop culture, everything really. Depending on the guests, we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Premier Otis. On social media, you know me as Peter Beats. You recognize my guest from When Calls the Heart on Hallmark Space Rosemary. Pascal Hutton is with us. Pascal, welcome to Pop Alternative. Thank you for having me. It's pretty interesting because there's been so many seasons of the show so far so much character growth a lot has gone on the the fad base has just exploded it gets bigger and bigger i want to know when you signed on to do this show what was the mindset like for you before all of that happened yeah well when i originally signed on i only i only was do, supposed to do two episodes in the season one i was actually on a different series at the time i w- we were on our hiatus and I came on to do these two episodes of Rosemary Coulter. And when I got the script, so I auditioned, I booked the part, and then I got the scripts. And I saw in the scripts at the the tail end, like Rosemary's last scene in the finale of season mm-hmm. one, it, Elizabeth says, okay, sayonara. It was pleasant meeting you. And I say, oh, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm staying right here. And I remember I phoned my agent and I say, I said, um, so <laughs> what's going on? Like, <laughs> This character doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Um, And then in the meantime, uh, my own show was canceled. My own series that I was on at the time was canceled. And literally the same day or the day after Brad Cravoy, who's one of the executive producers on When Calls the Heart, he phoned me and he said, I'm just checking your availability because we'd really like you to come on as one of our series uh, leads on the show. And I said, well, your timing couldn't be better because my show was (laughs) (laughs) Um, and so I really when I so my point in telling that whole story is that when I first came on I really thought I was just coming on to do and it was this little show Hallmark was not nearly the the well-known uh entertainment um machine that it is now and so and so this is like now eight years ago and so I just kind of thought it was like this little series and it's so honestly, it's so rare for a series to get beyond season. Well, if you get beyond season one, that's lucky, but two or three beyond that, I mean, you've hit the jackpot. Like you, you've the gold mine, like it's amazing. Yeah. And so I really didn't at that. And the, and the show hadn't aired yet. So I didn't, it didn't have a fan base yet. And so I really thought, Oh, here's just this little period piece and I'll do this two episodes and then when they asked me to come back I thought oh that's great like uh, I'm always happy to work and I really love this character and uh, and then it was the beginning of season three we did our very first um Hardy's family reunion now of course everyone in this world knows that our fans are called the Hardys and in the beginning of season three we did this basically like a convention it was this total ragamuffin, like (laughs) thrown together convention that was done in this like leaky tent during a rainstorm. And we did a panel and then we signed autographs and so many people for that very first one, so many people came uh, from all over like the United States and all over Canada. And I thought, Oh wow, this is, this is something special. I didn't, I did hadn't been aware up until that point how far our show was reaching. Yeah. And then it's just grown and grown and grown and grown. <laughs> and now nothing with this show surprises me because this is like the little show that could, it's like nothing can hold it. Those back. Hardys don't, they don't mess around. They don't mess around. <laughs> they don't mess around. <laughs> they love this show. <laughs> Absolutely. The, it, it, is it safe to say too that that's interesting because you didn't you, you didn't realize or think that Rosemary because so much has happened with Rosemary and Lee like there's just so much like <laughs> is it hard to do interviews these days because there's been so much that has happened with your characters? Yeah, but you know I <laughs> I, I lived it so I mean if there's ever going to be an expert it's going to be me like yeah. I'm going to know. Um, uh, but yeah, there, there's a lot of time. There's a lot of, there's a lot of story there. And so sometimes, um, when I'm talking, uh, people will bring up scenes from 
like way back. Yeah. And then I have to actually think of, oh, right. That <laughs> yes, I did do that. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What I think is really interesting too, um, getting back to the Hardys, is the dedication and detail. Like I'll go, I'll go, I'll see like these like Facebook groups and these Twitter groups, and like they have a lot of fan theories, and there's just like there's sometimes just like Rosemary Lee appreciation posts that just get like thousands of likes and comments. Like there's not even like anything else. Like it's just like this is a Rosemary Lee, like because like Rosemary Lee, like that's like the dream team a lot of people could say people love those two <laughs> yeah well i'm so happy because we really love that that duo as well but yeah people love people love rosemary and lee uh and i the stuff i love the most uh are when fans edit together because now we've told oh, the edits story. absolutely and so many scenes and i love seeing it honestly now at this point when i see edits like little on Instagram usually is where I see them, but little one minute edits that cover a lot of real estate of like from where we started to where we are now and little clips. It actually gets me a little emotional because I'm like, oh my gosh, all these memories, all these scenes that we've done together. Um, you know, I don't know if you've been watching the show right up until now, but Elizabeth and Rosemary, there's some friction there. Oh. They're fighting there. It's not good. It's not good. And it's been dragged out now for quite a few episodes. People are not happy about this. When are these two going to, going to like hug and make up? And so the fans have put together a lot of, a lot of um, edits of Rosemary and Elizabeth. And oh, it's just get me so emotional because I love those two so much. And I love Aaron so much. And to see our, our friendship on screen, but also it's mirrored off screen, right? Is it's to see that evolution. It, it, it's lovely. I love it. Absolutely. So I am curious to know too, um, cause I asked you about like the mindset of, you know, when you kind of start with the show, cause it's just the reason why I asked that is it's just kind of like the before and after with the show, just crazy because it's just like, like you said, it's a machine and it keeps growing and growing and the Hardys are fantastic. That's one of the craziest and amazing fan bases I have seen for a TV show. Like it's up there. Like, I, like I'm, I'm telling you, like it's up there with like Supernatural and Riverdale. Like it's, it's, it's up there for sure. <laughs> I know. And it's not anything I think you can really plan for. For. I think it's a group of people who ha love the show, have fallen in love with the show, but have formed a community outside of the show too. There's a real sense of community and collaboration, and 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 especially because for up until last year, where it was COVID, and obviously it was those conventions weren't happening. We were having these conventions, and they were growing every year, and it was a way for all these Hardies who were so connected online to then meet in person, and it just strengthened that bond yeah. and and that communication and that sense of everybody's experiencing it and enjoying it together. Absolutely. Here's a question I'm really excited to ask you because like I said, I think the one thing I think people love about the show, in my opinion, Pascal, I, I, you're on it so you might have a different, just the because there's a lot of different characters, the growth of every single character is something that I really enjoy. So do you think that's kind of a big thing? Like there's a lot of like there's a lot of things people enjoy about the show, but like why do you think the show is so popular? Is it am I onto something with the growth of the characters? Is it the way it's shot? Is it the dynamics? Like why do you think like what are the elements that have made this successful recipe? Um well, I don't think it's one. Yeah, element, it's a lot. But I think I think uh, what you touched on, that definitely is a huge part. This show has always been about um, hope and hope is almost synonymous with with growth and change. Yes. And I think that that you you've seen that in the characters. I, I'll speak for my character specifically. The Rosemary that we saw in season one is it, it, the core of her is still there, but she has grown and evolved into a much more well-rounded, grounded human being yeah. now. And um, I've always been so grateful. I mean, we're eight seasons in that the writers have never expected me to play the same thing over and over and over again. No. That would have gotten, got very boring for yeah. me and the audience. And they've always allowed Rosemary to grow substantially every season and evolve. And that's, that's really exciting for me. And I think that, They've done that with a lot of the characters, have them grow and evolve. So that's one element. 
the other uh, other another key element that I see and hear of people loving of the show is the sense of community. Now in today's world, we want that sense of community so much. Like we want to feel connected. We want to feel like we are a part of something bigger. And so on screen, you see that. Yes. Uh, exemplified in the town. The town is so strong when they come together and people love seeing that portrayed. But then off screen, the Hardys have kind of almost mirrored that in their own community that they've created. So there's that. Now, a third thing that I think ha- why the show is successful is there's no other show like it on on TV. We don't see a show that's so um, good hearted and, and wholesome and that you can sit down. I mean, the, the comments that, that warm my heart the most are the ones that say, you know, a mom saying I sat down with, with my mom and my children and we were all watching it together. What a beautiful thing to to have a whole family for the whole family. Absolutely. And be able to watch it together. And even when I hear from people that dads have gotten involved and they're, they're sitting there and at first they were a bit begrudging and then they got caught up in it. I love that. I love the fact that this show can bring multi ages together. And I think that that's really special. Absolutely. Now you were from, like you were from Vancouver, correct? Yep. So I'm just curious because there's a lot of shows like Hallmark is an American network and everything, and it's it's shot in Vancouver, but it's technically an American show. Even though there's a lot of, of of Canadians on it. I just am curious of your perspective though, because I, I'm from Canada originally as well, and I grew up watching a lot of amazing things. There seemed to be a stigma attached to Canadian TV and film that it wasn't as like good or as popular as a, like as American productions. And I just, that's kind of thrown out the window right now with, especially in like with comedies as well with like Kim's convenience, Shit's Creek and everything. Yeah. Isn't it crazy to see that as kind of a Canadian storyteller, like yourself, like the growth of like Canadian content a little bit. Yes. I think, uh, Streaming services have been a great equalizer uh, in that because before it was really hard for Canadian shows who were on our, our primary networks would be CBC or CTV. It, w- it was very hard to get your show on any American network. And so just to have anybody outside of Canada even seeing your work was a challenge. But now you even when calls the heart. So our, that's on Hallmark, which is a cable channel. When when calls the heart went on to Netflix that's when we saw a huge surge in international fans of yeah. the show. It just reached so far. Like our our community of fans in Brazil of all places is so huge. In England, in Australia, big, very, very big. And so that's what I, I think streaming services have really equalized that, which is amazing. It's amazing. It's crazy. Yeah, Mur- Murdoch's Mysteries, that that's a show too. Like that was like the CBC show that just got like international streaming syndication yeah. and has exploded. Like I was talking to someone from England and we were talking about shows and the first show they brought up was Murdoch's Mysteries. And I'm like, oh man. Like, yeah, yeah, and that show's been going forever. I mean, I think they, what are they, 12, 13 yeah. seasons? Like something really substantial. It, it's, it's amazing to see how how strong like the global like fan base are like the Hardys like it's it's global now and it's yeah. just you can't keep track um but it's really it, it must be so cool for you as a storyteller that the access now to your content is so universal as well Pascal I love it I yeah. love it I love it I love I mean the whole you can make a brilliant show and if no one's watching it well, then that's that's the end of it. Yeah. And so for me to to have people reach out from all over the world talking about how they enjoy the show and how much it's meant to them. I mean, that just makes it all worthwhile. And that really is what makes it happen in, at all. Like you, we wouldn't be on the air without all those people who care and love the show so much. Absolutely. No, for sure. Pascal, thank you so much for coming on Popternative. Thank you so much for having me. Your enthusiasm is just contagious. I really love it. <laughs> I appreciate that. So, uh, One Calls the Heart is on Hallmark, but like you mentioned, um, other countries, depending where you are, can watch it on Netflix as well. 
Yeah, Netflix. Now, certain countries have it on Netflix and certain don't. I, I'm not exactly sure. But Canada, we yeah. have it. Like, But I think it's like seasons one through six, I believe. Yeah, yeah. not all of the seasons. <laughs> but I think CBC Gem, if you download, which is a free streaming service, if you download CBC Gem, I think they have more seasons on CBC Gem. I think they might have up to season seven. Yeah, Maybe. CBC Gem is is good stuff. There's some, good, there's some really good yeah. stuff. I just <laughs> it recently there's so much good content on there there's so many it is a blow your mind a little bit though like how many how much like quality there is these days yes i mean it's hard to it honestly it's hard to even pick now like yeah. i felt like like <laughs> 10 years ago it was everybody was watching the same things everybody was watching breaking bad because that was like the the revolutionary show and now it's just how do i even pick one because it's the, they're all accessible to me all the time and they're all brilliant but it's what really i exciting. what i think happens right now is and that this is a streaming thing and a social media thing, how quick they hit, they they, they take off. That yeah, that to me blows my time. mind. It's like two days and it's like the biggest show on the planet. <laughs> yeah. like, like, like when I interviewed people from Outer Banks on Netflix, that show came out on Friday last year and I'm interviewing people on the Monday and that show is like the big, like the biggest show. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's crazy. That's binge culture too though, right? Yeah, that's binge culture. I'm guilty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? So I am on uh, Twitter and Instagram. And if you just look up my name, it'll come right up. I have different handles for both. And honestly, I, I always <laughs> that. So I won't, I won't venture to say that. But if you just Google, like put my name into Instagram or Twitter, it'll come up. Absolutely. Well, this has been Pop Turn. If YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Pascal Hunt from One Calls the Heart and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.